You are listening to the Just Skimming the Surface podcast with Wes W. Skim Milk Skim. Just Skimming the Surface is a podcast that focuses on the stories, interests, and passions of people. Taking inspiration from late night talk shows, guests are interviewed on their experiences, providing the opportunity to reflect and grow. Behind every person's life is a journey to be learned from. No matter how deep we may go, there is always a way to look deeper, which is why we're only just skimming the surface. Yes. Yeah, it sounds like it. Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to Just Skimming the Surface 3. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you so much for coming out. This is the last crusade for Wes. Unfortunately, um, we will miss him terribly. And um, just, um, I, we have a lot of fun stuff planned for everyone tonight. Um, can, you, can you turn that off? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. Hear me now, O thou bleak and unbearable world, thou art base and debauched as can be. And a man with his Starbucks cup bravely unfurled now hurls down his gauntlet to thee. I am my W. Skim Milk, the Lord of La Macha, my destiny calls and I go. And the wild winds of fortune will carry me onward or whithersoever they blow. Whithersoever they blow. Skimming the surface I go. I'm Ben Went, yes I'm Ben Went, I'll follow my grandpa till the end. I'll tell all the world proudly, I'm his grandson, <laughs> I'm his friend. <laughs> Hear me artists, performers, and all who listen, be prepared for a brand new podcast. For another endeavor is now to begin. And no more than an hour and a half. Whithersoever they blow, skimming the surface we go. Thanks. That was a stupid idea we had for the second show, but we didn't get to use because we had technical issues. <laughs> But yeah, welcome to Just Giving the Surface Live 3. This is our third and final show here at ISU, so I'm very excited for that. Don't <laughs> I'm not ready to cry. <laughs> this, I, I realize now that it kind of looks like a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just later on, at, the, at the end of the show, I'll just be lying down on the table. Don't worry. But <laughs> I wanted to kind of talk about college and how that's been for me, because this show is about me. Uh, <laughs> but no, for real, there's, I feel like experience, this is what the podcast is all about. It's about experiences and sharing those experiences. How can we learn from those experiences? And throughout college, I've had a lot of roadblocks and a lot of obstacles along the way. I mean, first off, I didn't have any sort of experience from my family members to go off of. My parents didn't go to college. My older siblings dropped out of college. And my twin brother and I were just like, we don't know what to do. And so when I applied to colleges, I applied to one. And that's it. I thought I was done. And I went there, and I hated it. So I left UIS, and I went to Columbia 
Didn't like that either. So I went to co uh, community college and I hated that too. So I was just like, what am I supposed to like? Do I have to go to college? So I got a job um, and that wasn't really the move either. I worked in a warehouse. <laughs> I worked in a warehouse screening packages for bombs. Uh, that, that was my job. Uh, and I, I thought, yep, this is it. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Um, I was planning, like, oh, I could go transfer to one in California and be in a nice place and, and get good money. Uh, yeah, that was not what I wanted to do. <laughs> so I decided to go back to college here at ISU. Yeah! And this is the first college that I've ever stayed longer than a year at. So that's really, that's really cool for me. Um, it's just the first place that really felt like home. And the first place that I felt like this is where I needed to be. I was doing what I needed to do through theater ed. And I was getting all the things I needed to get done. And I was doing a great job. I made a lot of friends, um, some that laugh really loud and obnoxiously. And, uh, I just really just feel at home here after these three years. So leaving after this semester and going to student teach is, is gonna be really hard. And I wanted to make sure that I went out with a bang with one last live show. So thank you all for coming out. We have a full audience. I had people sending me reservations like an hour before the show. Um, and luckily other people canceled theirs, so they got seats. Uh, <laughs> congratulations to you. Um, but with that, I kinda wanna start off the show. Um, so we're going to bring up our first guest, which is Kelsey Fisher Waits. Hello, Kelsey. I'm going to bring my hydro class. Is that playing? No, it's just my life, Benjamin. We had introduction music, but the soundboard just isn't working. Was that it? Right. That's my intro music? Uh, I put, put a spell on you because you. you're Oh, okay. Witchy, I just that. You know, All I heard was... <laughs> <laughs> Kelsey's already mad at me before we start. Um, so Kelsey, please mm -hmm. tell me about how you got into theater. Oh man. Um, well, I was a, an enthusiastic child. Can you believe it? Um, and I tried a lot of things. Like I did cheerleading, like like actual competitive cheerleading for like five years from like age, I don't know, like seven to whatever seven plus five is. And, uh, and that was fun, but I realized the thing I liked the most about it was just making ridiculous faces and like getting the crowd amped up. And so I got, I mean, I did like plays through elementary school as you do. Uh, I was in a beautiful production of How Does Your Garden Grow? Um, I played a tutu, uh, no, I played a flower with a tutu on my head and it was really, Honestly, compelling work that I did. Um, Life-changing. <laughs> life and so I dabbled in like some local theater uh, as a kid, but it wasn't until like sixth grade when I got into my first like legitimate drama class that I was like, oh, this is where I go. <laughs> okay. And uh, just kind of from there, that's I devoted all extra time to that. Did you ever plan on teaching? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So you wanted to be a theater teacher yeah. since... You started, or? So, I mean, I don't think I was in sixth grade, like, I can't wait to teach. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to teach college. <laughs> right? yeah. um, no, I knew I wanted to teach when I got into high school. I thought I wanted to be a high school theater teacher, and then I was like, oh, oh, you say curse words too much for that, madam. <laughs> um, and so uh, I actually, like, the first day I, I, I went to undergrad, I was going to enroll as a theater education major, oh, wow. and, like, on the way there, I was like, Mm -mm, gotta act. So I, I just that day changed it. But I knew that from then I wanted to pursue higher education. Okay. Yeah. So what would you say really changed your mind there to go into acting? Well, acting has always been my passion. Teaching was something that I was like, okay, I don't. It was never my gig to want to go to New York and like do the acting thing to pay the bills. That just mm -hmm. never was my dream. And so I, I was like, okay, how can I do acting, but also make money and also help people in a way that, that the theater always helped me. You know, my first drama teacher is somebody who I, I mean, I think everyone knows that first theater teacher that impacts you. It's like they, they stay with you so vividly. And, and I just always wanted to spark passion in other people like she did for me. And so it was just kind of a, a melding of those puzzle pieces together that made me realize, like, okay, acting is, is my heart, but I think teaching is my soul. So what do you say is the biggest difference between acting and then being a teacher? 
Um, <laughs> greeting. Uh, <laughs> um, being, being, a, being an actor, you are allowed to be a bit more selfish, I think, than if you are or an educator. An educator, you've got to come into a classroom and you've got a game plan. The game plan's great. I'm sure you guys know. You make all these lesson plans and you stay up for hours fine tuning them and you're like, yes, they'll learn. <laughs> and then you walk in and they don't understand. They're not there for it at all. And so there's like an adapt. Yes, you know? <laughs> you know? And so what, what I love about acting and teaching is both require you to adapt. You have no choice but to adapt if you are good at what you do. Um, but in, in teaching, I think that, yeah, there is a degree of selflessness. You have to be able to check your ego very much at the door and realize that if a student is struggling or if something's not quite clicking, it's not a personal attack on you. It's not a personal attack on your classroom or, or your environment, but it's, it's an opportunity to find a new door in to reach them. And that's why teaching is such a, a passion of mine. So where did you really find your teaching style? Because I'll say that, like, walking into acting two when I had it with you, it was just like a breath of fresh air. It was, like, different. And it, it just felt so inviting. And I, I just want to know where you kind of got that inspiration from. Yeah, I, I just try and be myself, honestly. Like, I try and have fun. Um, that's my, my biggest, uh, I guess, goal as a professor is to not just to teach my students, but to make teaching and learning something that can stick with them long term, not just like, oh, here's a test, regurgitate it back to me, go on to the next division of class. Like, no, I want you to have a lasting, like, body, mind, soul connection to what happens in class. And so I, I don't know what teacher, and I'm sorry that I can't remember to credit them, gave me the piece of advice when I told them I wanted to become an, an educator. They're like, every teacher you have, you can learn something from. Even if you learn, I don't want to do that. And so a lot of my undergrad and my graduate degree <coughs> training, it was a lot of stealing of like, I love that assignment. I love that that teacher does this. I hate when that teacher did that. And that made people shut down when they did that. So it's really like all of my, my teaching personality is just a big collage of people that have either inspired me or who I don't want to become. <laughs> yeah. So how do you balance being a teacher and still professionally acting? It's not easy. <laughs> um, I balance it by, by having multiple planners. Um, like, I'm not kidding. I literally have three planners. Erin Condren should really buy me a gift <laughs> for how much money I give her company. Um, but I, I don't know. For me, I don't look at it as like, oh, I've got to figure out a balance because I love everything I get to do so much that whatever stress that may accompany it, I don't really care. I don't know if that helps your answer. I don't ha I don't there's really no answer of like how do you balance? Work life balance is going to be something that you all as you go on as as to be artists and professors and teachers and and whatnot, you just kind of have to carve your own path. And for me it's always been making sure that I check in with myself every day and say, "Am I making me happy? Am I making me feel like I'm fulfilled?" And the answer keeps being yes. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. And it's it's really subjective. It absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. Every, every person has a different experience. A different, a different level of coping. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that for me, another way of finding balance is finding your people. Like, I have a very close group of, of, of a unit that I can go to when I'm like, oh my God, it's, um, it's rough goings. And so I think finding not only your passion, but, but the people that, will, that genuinely want you to succeed. And that sounds very like, I don't know, like woo woo of me or whatever. Is there a ghost? <laughs> That's our stage crew. <laughs> don't worry about him. Um, <laughs> But yeah, having, having a group of people that actually wants to see you succeed is just like a massive, massive benefit on this very difficult tightrope that you are all walking mm -hmm. if you are an actor and an educator. So what was your most recent acting experience then? Uh, Caesar. Caesar? Illinois Shakespeare Festival. And how is uh, Illinois Shakespeare Festival different than any other experiences you've had? In what way? Like in acting or just like? Acting wise, because I know it's like, I, I never have had an experience yeah. with a certain festival or yeah. anything. I've just done like a community theater production or a school theater sure. production. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's basically <laughs> like, what do you enjoy about the Shakespeare Festival? Uh, I just think it's freaking awesome. The amount of work that gets done at ISF is unreal. The amount of talent that they bring in is unreal. Uh, it is a de it's different than a lot of other arenas that I've worked in. It. it I was only in Caesar this past year, but then I did all three shows the year before, Mary Wives, Henry V, and Shakespeare in Love. And that was my first um, participation in a festival that spanned that amount of time. So at first I was like, oh my god, what did I say yes to? Um, because it is, it's like you, you are there every day from, you know, 
you start the day early and you're there until late and it is like you are surrounded by people who are better than you so you are constantly trying to be better than you are which is what makes it awesome because you're never done learning ever never ever never and if you think that like you've, you've achieved whatever it is to be an actor and you're done then quit acting um, so that's that's why I like ISF is because I it intimidates the crap out of me and so therefore it makes me better um, but yeah it's it's a, it's an intensive um, almost like a program but it, you learn a lot you get to meet a lot of people from all over the country and they're all really incredible working artists teachers designers so yeah it's a great experience at ISF so since coming to ISU how has your life as a theater artist changed mm -hmm. how has it changed I direct more <laughs> okay. I mean I've directed since um, I guess like tw 2008 so for a while, but very sporadically, it'd be like, oh, one thing this year, or two things this year, and since I've been here, that's escalated quite a bit, and I love that. If you would have asked, like, 18-year-old Kelsey if she thought she would, like, be an actor slash director, mm -hmm. she'd be like, mm -hmm, bitch, no, can I pass? <laughs> oh, no. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. We're in college. Okay. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I have forgotten the question. <laughs> <laughs> How has your life as a Oh, good, yes, good, Kelsey, good, Kelsey, good. Um, yeah, so directing more has been awesome, and I'm a very, like, aesthetically driven person, so it's been cool to put that not just in my own work, but, like, on an actual stage. Um, yeah. What's the biggest challenge you've faced in the classroom so far? Biggest challenge? Um, students not reading the syllabus. <laughs> 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 that was um, listen, I craft, I craft a masterful syllabus. I yes. spend like just a week for each class making it a, a beautiful document, truly. <laughs> Full of every single answer to any question you may have <laughs> about any technicality that may arise over the course of the course. And, uh, and not, a day, not a day goes by that I don't have someone ask a question, genuinely shocked ask a question that has been there since the first day. Um, so that sounds like a dumb answer, but it is, it's the tea, man. Like, <laughs> it, is, it is, especially, again, if you are like a perfectionist like me and you put so much effort and they're like, uh, how many pages are the essay? When is it due? What is it about? Um, <laughs> so that's my answer to that question. <laughs> Um, okay, so most recently I saw uh, your show that you just directed with Nomad Theater. Yeah. At, um, it was Raising the Bar, mm -hmm. right? Could you tell me more about that process? Because that was a really interesting show. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't know, Nomad Theater Company is the brainchild of Kristen and Connie um, here at ISU. And this was their inaugural production, Raising the Bar. And it was a site, they are a site specific theater. So they're, they're like, hashtag is theater that moves. So they're really interested in like, going to unconventional theater spaces and making work that is site specific to those places, which is something I'm all about. I did stuff like that in grad school. Like I love non-conventional theater. Mm -hmm. um, and so this, this first one, yeah, they uh, coordinated before they asked me to direct, it, to direct it. So they already had the idea that it was going to be uh, bar oriented and they put out like feelers for local playwrights. We had like three local playwrights and then I think three or four um, like from just around the country mm -hmm. submit and they went through all of these different submissions and found the ones they liked and brought me in and then yeah it was kind of a mad dash because it was their first production so anytime that a company is emerging it's like it's the, all those spinning plates and figuring out like who's gonna grab one yeah. um so it was it there were moments that it, we were we all panicked and we're like oh no will this happen um but luckily it absolutely did and it was definitely a success and uh it, it's just really cool to work with people in the community because I'm with, I see you people all the time, you know, and so it's, it, it was in, in, interesting and fun to get to work with um, older actors that mm -hmm. have maybe been out of the game for a little bit while, for a while, so they're really excited to get back in, and that was refreshing, and yeah, just literally having two different bars that we went to, and we never got to have a tech at one of them, so we had to reblock, restage, like, essentially the whole thing, like, day of, so stressful, but in a really cool way. Because for me, I, I kind of like to be under a little bit of pressure. Like, I'm a professional procrastinator in that way. Um, because I, I don't know, I, I just turn it out a little bit more. But, yeah. So, with directing, do you find yourself directing uh, 
a lot of variety of shows, or do you like to stick to certain uh, genres? Or well, I like spoopy stuff. Um, <laughs> I, I I like the dark and twisty, which is what. But I, I love like I'm so excited to direct the wolves because it is, <laughs> woo, yeah. Um, it is way outside of my like directorial comfort zone. I like stuff that's got just like a, just like a gremlin energy about it, you know. Um, and uh, and the wolves and raising the bar were were very much shows that like I enjoy. I enjoy challenges, so I don't mind stepping out of my comfort zone in that way. But definitely out of my comfort zone. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you the same thing that I asked um, uh, John and Jimmy last time they were on the show. Okay. Um, what sort of jobs did you have before you became a teacher? Well, see, I came straight from grad school, so. <laughs> but like, I mean, part-time jobs? Um, I, so what, let's see. your jobs, maybe. Okay, I worked, I was a really bad hostess at Chili's, <laughs> and then I was a really bad waitress at three Chili's. Um, <laughs> so, so that is one. Um, oh, I worked at Old Navy for like a literal week. Um, I chose to work the week that like their freaking flip flops go on sale, and I was like, <laughs> gotta go! Um, I like babysat for a while, and then I was like, I don't really know that I should be trusted with children. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something random. I didn't, I, I, I worked at my grad program in grad school, so I luckily was able to just like be around theater people. But yeah, just a lot of bad, bad, oh, I worked, I literally worked at a, a pizza place for like four years. Good for you, Kelsey. Um, <laughs> which was fun. I worked with like, it was all, it was like my entire undergraduate theater program all worked there. So it was cool. So as you worked all these jobs, I've, I've had a bunch of jobs too. Yeah. And like, yeah, the bomb boxes. Not this. super old. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, <laughs> What do you take away from those jobs that you bring into your career? Do you, did you find any skills or anything from those experiences? Uh, patience, I guess. Um, to always put the order in right when you get it and not later when you think you'll remember. Because you won't. <laughs> you won't. Um, no, but no, seriously, patience and, um, again, adaptability. Because in a, if you've ever worked in a restaurant or retail, you know that, like, it's just a special kind of chaos, and you can either embrace it and work with it, or you have to quit. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have any tips or, or tricks for emerging artists who want to be actors or teachers? I think just say yes to as much as you can up front. I mean, know, your, know yourself, know your morals, don't commit to things that you don't actually think you're going to find artistic fulfillment in, but for me, that was the best part of my journey when I was first starting out is I just said yes to everything. Even if I didn't mm -hmm. think it was ideal for my, my own personal artistic growth or if it wasn't something, if I, say yes to stuff that scares you. That's the biggest thing. And, and again, you will find yourself traveling in, in alleys that you never thought you'd be down, but they're great places to be. Like I said, I would have never guessed I'd be directing as, of, as, as often as I am. And it's something that I now consider one of my favorite parts of my work. So say yes often. Um, be kind, be kind, because everyone's trying, and this is a really hard profession that we're in, both mm -hmm. in theater and in education. Both are so hard to not only get it, your foot in the door, but to keep it and then to stay happy once it's there. So nur nurture yourself, nurture your, your, your art, and just try and, and do things that are kind to yourself. So something else I know that you like to do is uh, when we did uh, Vinegar Tom, mm -hmm. you got a tattoo for the show. It did. So wh what is that? What is the? Where did that come from? Do you get a, one for every single show you do? I or? don't. No, Vinegar Tom Sounds was like. just very special. <laughs> um, uh, I also was, I just like I like tattoos. So, <laughs> um, but no, uh, Vinegar Tom was something mm -hmm. that, I mean, as you know, you were part of it. We were constantly sort of like under the pressure of multiple projects needing the space at the same time. And, <laughs> And all kinds of, yeah, you know. Um, and just like, it's a hard show. That is a really, like, Carol Churchill is amazing, but she is not an easy brain to pick. Um, so it was just such a challenging project in general. And then the cast that I was just so lucky enough to have, they just crushed it. And I, I'm so still very proud of that show. And uh, yeah, so it just, it just felt right at that time. Here she is. Her name is Lois the Lotus. Hey, girl. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have any parting words of wisdom before we play our game? Um, always save up your ultra rewards. Perfect. All right, we're gonna set up for. We have a game that Ben found. Um, 
that he really wanted to do. Okay. Um, so it's called, he did something. <laughs> <laughs> am I moving? Yeah, you'll no, have, you will. I'm moving. I am. Will. I am not. Uh, so yeah. this is called True Confessions. Okay. Uh, it's something that the founders <laughs> um, so We both have two stories <laughs> in each of these envelopes. One is true, one is not true. And so we're going to go around the table, we're going to pick which one we tell, and it's up to the other people to in investigate and see which one, like whether we're I telling bet. the truth or not. I know. <laughs> Does that make sense? We'll see. Maybe. What? <laughs> so I pick or you pick? I pick or you pick? We, we'll pick. You pick. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, pick yeah, yeah. which so like, one we want you to tell. So okay. do you want to go first? Since you're the one, you're the pro. You're the one who. I don't know. You're the pro. I, I, no, no, no. I'm really bad. I'm like, I'm really bad at lying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> bad acting. But yeah, yeah, no. But, like, it, like I can, like I can act. I, I think, but like I can't lie. <laughs> Players, let's watch. <laughs> um, we'll start with Wes. You're, no, it's your, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. This is your, this is your game. But it's not me starting. So. Yeah, nah. It's one best two out of three. One. Okay. Rock, Rock, paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, no, we're doing just one. <laughs> <laughs> no! Yeah, okay. A B, renegade. I say B for Ben. Okay, B, B for, for Ben. <laughs> Why not? Okay, story B. Um, oh, it is in there. Okay, I was like, where? I did my job last <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Wow, okay, Ryan. You are stage crew. <laughs> <laughs> you are not equity. <laughs> 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 Okay, I trust you and I appreciate you and everything you do. I appreciate you. I'm right, I'm right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell my story now. <laughs> All right. Start the, um, start the time. How much time are we given? You, so seconds. you start, you tell it, and then we get 60 seconds to, 60 to seconds? question you. To question me, okay. yeah. All right. Here's the story. I was suspended a few weeks into third grade for running out of the school. Why'd you run out of the school? Yeah, why? I honestly don't remember. I was super mad at the teacher. That's what did the teacher do? Well, <laughs> look, I, okay, so I, I kind of had um, a lot of behavioral issues when I was in uh, elementary school. Did and you I not have new. enough potassium? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was new to this area, okay? We had okay. just moved there. That was not my first grade at the related. school. Okay. And I, I, I don't remember why, but I do remember. Convenient that you don't I remember. Yeah. I think you were mad. The, 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 the I remember when I was full of rage. Yeah. The principal was gone that day, so an assistant principal had to take me into another room. What was his name? Her name? Their um, name? I do not remember. What's the school's oh! name? The school is uh, uh, Oakland Elementary. What's your what mascot? Was, what was the teacher's name? The Eagles, I think. What was the teacher's name? The teacher was Miss Paplava. That's a fun name. I think one of my little brothers had her after me. So <laughs> when you ran out, did you physically run, or is that? Okay. You get? So I was standing, I was sitting in front of uh, a class of people, and I, I, it, they were fifth graders, and I was a third grader. Is it time? Okay. Now we get to discuss it. <laughs> okay. I don't know. He left a lot of there there was, details. There were major. Things. I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> a lot of big holes. A lot of big holes, but it's also a weird lie. And like, his teacher's name was oddly specific. It was. It wasn't like. Smith. Yeah, like, like, yeah. There yeah. was a Mr. Smith at the school. <laughs> Supposedly. But he doesn't remember why. But what school does it like the biggest thing. Yeah. Because right? if, if I ran out of the school when I was I would know the school. Yeah, I would have remembered. We think it's a lie. It's actually the truth. Oh, um, do you remember? Yeah. Oh. Okay, I do not remember why I ran out. But I remember I was seated in front of, um, I was seated in front of a bunch of bunch of fifth graders. I was so <laughs> nervous. I was a third, third grade? grade. I was a third grader, and there, the principal you? is gone, so the um, substitute principal, I didn't know if those were the things, but apparently it was, and she was also a co-teacher in another classroom. Oh. So she had me sit in, in front of all these fifth graders, and they're all just staring at me. And I was like, I As don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I ran out of the classroom, and then I looked both ways down the hall, like typical movie, like, oh, I go. and um, I, the door was literally right next to the classroom, so I ran right out, and instead of, I couldn't remember where I lived, because we were so new to the area. I lived really, like, close, it was like a couple this blocks a away, <laughs> a couple of blocks away, but I couldn't remember where I lived, and so I walked, instead of going behind the school, where there's, like, barely any windows, 
I went in front of the school and I ducked underneath all the windows. <laughs> so I run in across the door and I got as far as like the farthest uh, soccer goal before I calmed down and was like, yeah, I'm going to go back. <laughs> Good. And then uh, the two twin teachers found me in the parking lot and brought me back inside. I was suspended for a whole week, and I got a cupcake at the end of the suspension. Well, that's great. nice. <laughs> Best suspension ever, honestly. <laughs> uh, cool. That was my story. Uh, thank you. Okay, who's next? Um, You're running this yeah, way. we're going. We're going like this. Oh, convenient, Benjamin. <laughs> Fax just wants to close the show. Yeah. No, Do I pay? No, we get L. Um, <laughs> well, we just did B. A, um, I guess. I mean, that's the only other option. A for the grade <laughs> that Kelsey gave me at Acting 2. <laughs> for Balaz, <Bala's> Wesley. <laughs> I <laughs> after the, the fact. It's okay. only when it's in, in the system. Oh, gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Uh, good cop, bad cop. Bad, bad cop, good cop. Uh, you be the bad cop. Fired cop. We love you, you yeah, yeah. Stop giving him lines. We're not allowed to cast freshmen in these shows, so I'm going to get in big trouble. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yes. When I was a child, a British soccer league tried to recruit me to train in England. Okay. What's, what was your precise age? Uh, like seven. seven. Why did they want you? Why wouldn't they want me? <laughs> was it as a soccer player or as a cheerleader? As a soccer as a player. <laughs> Are there skills that transfer there, or like uh, as a cheerleader, are you better at soccer? Is that, is that well, a, no, no, no. I don't know. The, I don't know. I don't know the science behind yeah. that. Uh, well, what position did you play? Forward. Forward. <laughs> what does that mean? You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. What did you? What was your? What was? Uh, what was your? Ah, where was it? Where was it in England? It, it was just. I don't know. United Kingdom. <laughs> what, what was the the name of the team? British League. What was? The, what was the name of the person? <laughs> the name of the person. The it was. The person it was, was a called? camp. It was how, a camp. How did, how did they? Have? British League. <laughs> so the, it was British League camp in America. Yeah. Like they came, it, I'm pretty sure it was a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> How were they there if they lost the Revolutionary War? I don't know these answers. Um, but I scored three not, goals. You scored three goals, okay. So that's why they wanted me. <laughs> okay. um, gosh, British League Soccer Camp. But I just, like it, I just feel like we wouldn't allow them to have camps in America. <laughs> Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to feel that one. Uh, 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 it seems like there's a lot of holes in this one. But there well, were... I mean, why would it be called British Soccer League? Don't they call it football over there? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that, I like that. I said, maybe it's a lie. I think it's a lie. You're wrong. <laughs> I did. What the hell? It's the greatest scheme of all. Yeah. British Soccer League, they'll never know. Yeah, no, literally, it was like a like a two week camp that they like were like, come Americans, and my mom was like, okay. And so like my brother, for those of you who don't know, my brother was uh, accepted for Olympic training in soccer. So like they were like, do soccer, and I was like, okay. Um, so I did it, and yeah, I think they were just taking anyone that wasn't actually awful and trying to. It was just to get money. So I. I'm not a good soccer player. Don't ask me to do it for you. Um, but so you yeah. be training for the Olympics then? Yeah, I am training oh, for the okay. Olympics. That's so. good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess it's Ben's turn. Okay. Finally. What do you want? Oh, man. B for Ben? B for Ben. B for Ben? B for Ben. Okay. Okay. Are you doing a good cop, bad cop thing like you wanted? I'm always the bad cop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> In high school, I was the president and founder of the Golden Nipple Club. What is the Golden Nipple Club? <laughs> it's where you spray paint your nipples gold. Why would you ever do that? Why does that? Well, it sounds like something you do. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this this senior told me that. What senior? What, what his was name the name? Was, his, uh, uh, Andy Roadcap. That doesn't feel like a real name. <laughs> <laughs> did you meet? Not a person? Was there a meeting time? <laughs> um, it was. It was. It was always on Mount Barbara. When did you meet? It was the last show of the year, and they said WD40 gets spray paint. 
right off the body, and we had gold we had gold spray paint, so we were like, well, we could just use it. And so then, what made you choose the nipple, Benjamin? <laughs> now, was it actual, I, I don't know the reason. Was it sponsored had... by a teacher? It was unofficial. It okay, was secret. That's good. She probably doesn't know. <laughs> it was quite honestly a good thing to hear. She doesn't know. Yes? Um, How many people were in this club? Did you get um, So my, my first year, it was just me. My second year, I <laughs> My second year. Do you know that if it's just you, asked out a club? <laughs> hey, I got people in. This sounds um, like a hazing scheme. I'm just saying there's probably some people at ISU who are a part of it. Whoa! <laughs> who went to my high school. Okay. That's, oh. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously true. It's it it so must, <laughs> must be true. He says he's but a bad But what if liar, it's so obviously a true? Good lie. I don't know. I don't know. That would be a pretty good lie, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's true. I'm gonna say it's true. Yeah, it was true. Yeah! yeah. 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 No, I don't want <laughs> to. I have one from freshman year, sophomore, no, freshman, did, junior, and senior why year. Why did you keep doing this? <laughs> Tradition. <laughs> Obviously. Oh, Come on. Yeah, no, I, think okay. it, I think it died after I left for some reason. I don't, I don't really know. Ryan, make sure these are recycled. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Kelsey, for coming on. Hey, thank you. Our next guest is our musical guest, and I wanted to talk to them a little bit before they sang their set. So please welcome to the stage, Southbound. Yeah. Hey, guys, hello, how's it going? Hello. All right, please introduce yourselves and what you play in your band, because I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Jake, and I am the lead singer and uh, guitar rhythm guitarist. My name's Matt. Um, I'm the bass guitar player, so you're actually not going to be hearing me play today. Uh, so I'm just going to be awkwardly sitting here. Uh, but I also sing harmony vocals. So. My name's Kevin, and I am lead guitar. Lead guitar. Okay. So Southbound. Where did that name come from? <sighs> That's a good question, actually. Funny story. <laughs> okay. It actually came from an ex-member. Uh, There's yeah. an ex-member. <laughs> there was an ex-member. Um, but <laughs> everything's cool. But yeah, so and honestly, we're from Chicago. Okay. We sing um, <laughs> country music, right? Oh. It's kind of country pop. Country so pop, it's, yeah. it's, it's uh, from Chicago, you know, you never really hear that. You know, so uh, our, my, my dream and their dream was to go down south and, and hopefully one day Make you know, something of it. Make you know? something of it. So that's why you know Southbound. Yeah, Southbound. Cool. Yeah. So you said you recorded this current single that you have out yeah. in Nashville. Yes, we so did. That was such a cool experience. Uh, <laughs> we drove down to Nashville and recorded with as our... Did. As you do. Precisely. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we recorded with our producer. Uh, his name is Daniel Dennis with uh, Prime Cut Studios. Incredible, incredible man inside and outside of the studio. Um, turned our song from what we knew it as when we practiced just by ourselves into something that's completely different and something that we could have only dreamed of. So it was incredible. Wow. Yeah. So how did how did the band really start then? So um, about last year, I want to say December into January. I came out with a little tiny demo that I made in my uh, in my bedroom, and then I took it to a buddy of mine. We did it, and then we kind of formed it, and then we uh, sent it out. And so from there, it kind of turned from uh, one person coming up to me and asking to uh, just help me out. So I said, okay, yeah. So we started getting um, contacts from this studio, from this studio, and uh, places to perform. And I didn't have a band. It was just me. I played piano, I played guitar, but I can't do both at the same time. So, right. No bad attitude. Right, exactly. <laughs> no bad attitude, yeah. So, uh, I met Kevin through music therapy, and um, he plays guitar. So I said, hey, I need another guitarist. So, let's link. And so we did. We, we did. And it, it clicked. It went boom. And I was like, wow, that, that was awesome. Uh, and then... Matt here, who is in Clef Hangers hey, with up? me, um, great guy, great guy, <laughs> came up to me and said, you know, hey, I, I play bass and was wondering if you ever need a bass, and I said, of course. So then the three of us came, and then uh, we had some other members in the group. We had another singer, and then we had a drummer who was also our manager, and then some things just, 
didn't click. So just the, us three kind of stayed and we we're like, hey, you know what? We have a couple good demos and let's send them off. This guy heard it and he said, come on, record with me. And so we took the chance. So you write your own music then? Yes, yes. I, um, so far I've, all the songs that we've done, I have written on my own and then I will send them to these guys and they come up with the special sauce. The guitar, the bass, <laughs> everything. Uh, and then we recently started writing and so within um, the next couple months we'll hear a couple songs that we wrote together. So That's it's great. gonna be it's gonna be awesome. So how many um, <clears throat> gigs have you done? Have you done that, anything? I, I've seen you perform before Clef Hangers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh boy. So, uh, so far because we've only been pretty much a band for, I want to say like a good five months solid. <laughs> we literally formed, like us three together formed a week before we went to Nashville. And we said, you know, let's just, let's just try it. We had harmonies, we had a guitar, we had an idea and we brought it to this guy. Um, but because of that, um, we want to focus on more writing right now and kind of forming our sound before we go and perform. So we've actually only, I want to say like maybe three, three or four, or four yeah, yeah. actual Some performances small. where we've like maybe like, it was, the big one was the Clef Hanger one that was mm -hmm. in front of everyone. That was our very first ever big performance. Um, and then a couple like at uh, coffee shops and uh, I performed one at a bar with with uh, one of our old um, our old members, but yeah, that's kind of what we did. Yeah. So, what's the future plan for y'all? Are you planning on just going off doing music? Or are you going to do something with your degrees as well? Or that's a that's a good question. I know <laughs> it's kind of hard to answer. We don't necessarily know ourselves because we all have our own idea of what we want. Like ultimately, like play music, yeah. <coughs> whether it's the degree or this and. Ultimately, we do want to play as a band as much as we can if we're lucky enough and mm -hmm. whoever gives us a chance like you, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, my, I mean, my idea is uh, my dream ever since I was young was this is what I'm doing. This is exactly what I'm doing and I'm going to do anything I can to do it. And so with with these get with the help of them I mean it just it clicked so far so that's what we're we're gonna try to stick with it you know yeah and we have plans uh, to go back to Nashville in early January to record another song so that's uh, one of the songs we're gonna be playing today so we're just gonna <laughs> show cool. it for you guys Hope so you like it. before you play this last question do you have any words of wisdom for aspiring musicians hmm. right as much as you can yeah. <laughs> yes true. yes uh, um, exactly what the last guest said say yes to everything um literally i have i mean me personally i've had many people come up to me and ask do this try this and i haven't turned down anybody because i mean i mean i'm a nobody you know what i mean so in order to be somebody you have to you have to say yeah, yeah. you're somebody to oh, thanks, thanks. but no but honestly and also keep working like um when, when, when I wrote Let's Ride, I was uh, literally at my pool with my sister and one of my best friends. And I had this beat, it was after my freshman year, and I said, like, what, like, okay, I had this specific beat, what am I gonna do with it? And my buddy was like, let's ride. And I said, what? And he was like, he was like, let's ride, like, keep going with this stuff, you can't stop. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, so we wrote a song, a big summer song, by a pool and that's literally where I got my ideas and then with these guys it was we're going to Nashville literally a week before we had some complications going on mm -hmm. and we, we just pulled through we had harmony set up we had guitar solo set up we had everything set up and we said let's just do it and we went and I think that is the biggest thing as a musician is you have to take a chance uh, what this a chance it was. That, yeah. was a, that was a big step for us. This could have been, this could have been bad. <laughs> this could have been real bad, but it, it was an expensive step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, you you can't yeah. always be cheap with your money, um, and that I mean that, that's the sad part. You know, you can't. I mean, yes, you can do the best you can by yourself, but eventually you're gonna have to put some work into it, mm -hmm. um, and that's what we did. And I mean, so far. 
I mean, within the first week, we almost had like almost 2,000 listens. So that was like huge. And I was like, I don't even know 2,000 people. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, like we learned like a month later that it played in like six different countries. Like, I don't know anyone in Spain, you know? And I was like, yo, they're listening to our music. That's pretty cool. So that's, I mean, it was a good chance that we took. Yeah, That's super cool. Okay. <clears throat> I'm excited to hear what you have to play. So ladies and gentlemen, Southbound. <laughs> writing together and we came up with everything and uh, we're going to Nashville to record that one uh, within the next month and a half, two months. So this next song is Let's Ride and this is the one we just released. So The one person that's heard it so far. <laughs> I heard you. All right.
Summer air feels so right. I'm driving to the coast in this beautiful sunshine. Oh, I'm doing alright. Oh, I'm feeling alive. And let's ride down the sand to I hope this highway never closes. I'm driving around the windows down, speakers up. Facebook, Facebook Southbound, and then they're also on Spotify, Southbound. Apple Music. Apple Pandora. Music too, Pandora, <laughs> all of them. You, Check them out. Uh, you're going to hear that new song soon. That's awesome. Please welcome Jimmy Chrisman to the stage. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a very special game uh, uh, Ryan, can you bring out our blindfolds, please? Oh, no. <laughs> Don't trip and die. Oh, look at this Wes. Oh, this is me? Okay. Oh, wow. No. Wow. All right. Did you, I don't know. It's not too make... tight. It works. I'm not choking or dying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So what we're doing <laughs> is uh, we we bought a bunch of baby food. <laughs> I just thought it'd be fun to see if we could guess uh, what the flavors of baby food are. Oh, you did uh, now, didn't you? <laughs> you thought this would be fun? <laughs> I thought it'd be super fun. Oh, cool. Um, so Ryan's mixed up a bunch of the different flavors that we bought. He made oh, sure great. to keep the meat ones out of my cup, uh, and he made sure to keep the gluten ones out of Ben's cup. So we won't have any issues there. Uh, Brian, you're going to have to help us out because we really can't see you. <laughs> if you got spoons, um, and then uh, bring out the cups whenever you're ready. Where is he? He's in the back. He's backstage where the stage crew goes. So what are we uh, doing best? We just... We're trying them and seeing if we can guess what they are. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> we're just eating it. In I, front I of didn't them. know. We're just going to sit here and eat it. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. I didn't know. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, give me your hands. I'm warm up. Okay, my, my hands are out. I'm going to give you the cup. Cup? You yeah, got Brian, it. Brian, you're going to have Oh, there's a spoon in the cup. Okay. Uh, ben, give me your hands. We have the cup. <laughs> Jimmy, I actually spilled the whole thing into yours, so just kind of, you know, just don't eat it all. Cool. <laughs> I can't. I can barely keep myself with my eyes open. There you go. Hands okay. Up. Jimmy? <laughs> Wait, who's going first? Okay. I'm not um, going to Ben, you get to go first this time. How about that? Oh. We've got three rounds. Three rounds, and we're going to see. <laughs> right. I'm okay. You okay? Yeah. Okay, I, cool. I don't even know if there's anything on my spoon. <laughs> okay. Is there? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Mmm. <laughs> What, what is it? <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> it tastes like there's some pump. It tastes like pumpkin pie mix. Like so, um, is there? 
Is there pears? <laughs> Ryan, do you remember what you put in these? Who's got pears? No pears? No. Um, <laughs> you get. <laughs> you get three guesses. Oh, don't, forget. Oh. He, don't forget he mixed them, so there's probably like multiple oh. things. He these ones like, I didn't mix. They're okay. just one. Oh, these are just one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is it? Is it? Is it? Up to the difficult one. You know what it is. Okay, yeah. scaffolding. I got it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um. <laughs> 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 Is it a vegetable? Can I get a get? Can I get a hint? No. Um, well, who said no? <laughs> <laughs> no, really, who said it? We can't see you. <laughs> I think it might be. <laughs> you don't remember? Ryan, what is Ryan no, doing? There's a lot of baby food back here. It's all nebulous. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your what's your guess, Ben? I I still think it's I still think it's pumpkin. <laughs> he thinks it's pumpkin. Is it pumpkin? He's close. What the uh, well, is it a squash? Uh, it is squash! Oh. Yeah. Ew. Ew, you liked it before. No, the second bite was awful. <laughs> Alright, yeah, Jimmy, would you like to Yeah. You actually have to put it in your mouth. I did. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jimmy's is two. There's two? Yes. You mixed Jimmy's, but I'm, not ours? What are you following, Ryan? I don't know. I'm, I'm so confused. There's so many jars back here. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my matcha? Um. No, 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 no. no. Banana? That's part of it! <laughs> okay, one, one out of two. I don't know what else is there. Um, <laughs> it's a pretty basic puree. Apple? <laughs> <laughs> apple. It is apple! Runberg felt in, in cabaret. Um, okay. Oh. 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 I've never had this stuff before, so you know. I, I never really had baby food? No. No. They found me in the woods. <laughs> That explains it. <laughs> hmm. Why does it? Why does it taste kind of like macaroni? Does it? Is there anything like pasta-y in this? No. <laughs> <laughs> there is a jar Wait, is it carrot. carrots? No. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta keep eating it. And I'm I'm sad about it. Can I trade with Jimmy? <laughs> yeah. Well, is it sweet potato? <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay, yeah. it's sweet potato. I was like, it tastes starchy, so it's got to be something. Why, why was my applause lackluster? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give a couple fake guesses, so I don't think it's like actually. You got fake guesses too. What? What? I didn't know what mine was. Yeah, and you guessed it. How <laughs> was a pumpkin close to a squash? Look, man. I, I, I can't see anything, so Wait, there's give, a time me, for new give cup. me a break. I'm, I'm going to take your cups, I'm going to put them down, I'm going to come back with new cups, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> just you, just, just yeah. turn, turn the audience one gone. <laughs> All right, so, Jimmy, if you had to sum up this semester in one sentence, what would it be? Busy. Mm, that's not a sentence. Oh, yes, you're right, it's not. Uh, uh, <laughs> that too. This has been a very full semester. I've learned a lot, and it's been really cool watching um, a lot of you that came in with me my first year um, starting to move on and do really cool things. Oh, shut up, then. <laughs> so, how is this? Is like the first uh, semester that we have the new Fed program. Uh, so, how how are you getting Jimmy. used to the new curriculum, um, Jimmy? Oh, what? Uh, <laughs> thank you, Brian. I thought. Ben. 
How are you getting used to the new curriculum? Why is this heavy? Um, <laughs> I put more in there. M make sure you mix up a little bit because it kind of settles on top. So oh, just kind of it yeah. settles. <laughs> oh, oh no, my smells <laughs> awful. It's, it's, it smells like absolute poop in the bag. It's so bad. I think mine has bees in it already. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm gonna ask my question again. Okay. How is how are you adjusting to the new curriculum for that? Um, it's been really strange not seeing um, many of my Fed majors every week. Um, whereas this semester I, I I've got all the freshmen and, and first year transfers twice a week. And it's been okay. What is happening? Are you dying? Me? It's so bad back here. <laughs> <laughs> Always treat your stage <laughs> Mine smells so bad. <laughs> okay, um, what order do we want to go in this? I'm game? not going first. <laughs> Jimmy, I'll go first. I'll go first. Just peas? No, there's something else. Oh, oh god. god. <laughs> oh no. It's just... <laughs> I don't. I don't know. <laughs> there's something else. I, I can't remember what it is. I think I can if you say it. It's not. <laughs> what? I don't even know the options. How are we supposed to guess what's in it if you don't even know what's in it? Okay, I remember. It is, it is, it's overwhelming back here. Just, <laughs> Feel free to open the curtain. Well, not too much. Well, not I mean, if he has to, he can't. Well, yeah, only up to, like, the certain, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I know. You got I know. it. Okay, well, what do you guess, Ben? Um, well, peace is one of them. I can guarantee that. Um, <laughs> I have to taste it again, unfortunately. What's the other one? I'm like, I want to eat mine now. I just, it, the peas are so over... <laughs> Just <laughs> what did he do? What's his range? I don't Ryan, know. I can't see. He that. didn't add anything, did he? No. no. Okay. What did he do? Yeah. Um. Is it? I'll say it's it's also green. <laughs> it's, yeah. Okay. Are they? It's not the. Uh, oh, I think I know what it is. Why would you know? Because <laughs> it's also green. Um. And it tastes like peas. Was it this? Was it the the? What are the not? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I can say it's really watery. That was like, good. Well, that's literally what baby food is. It's hey, food Jimmy. and water. Hey Jimmy. Hey Jimmy. Mm. That's applesauce. That's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ryan. What else is there? <laughs> Isn't it hard? Like, there's always one overwhelming flavor. Pears? No. I don't know, it's applesauce. <laughs> Clearly not. Not, not, not. There, there was some of it in there, but. Yeah. Ryan, you're a liar. There's nothing else in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is okay? it? Do you give up? I do give up. It's peach. peach. Oh! <laughs> oh, that sounds. Why, what? Green peach. That sounds and delightful. <laughs> what is this, Ryan? It's apple. It's just apple. <laughs> This definitely has pears in it. Dogs. Okay, so there's one of them that has three things in them, one of the things is pears. <laughs> okay. Um, is it pears? You better mix a lot of stuff with like peach. We do. Oh, there's gonna be some more paper left over. Is are there peaches in this one too? I I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Apples? Is it <laughs> Is it a vegetable? Um, yeah. <laughs> Did you put more sweet potato in it? I think so. Okay. <laughs> so pears, sweet potato. Um. So, so this one has three items in it. It's one jar, but there's three items. Oh no. Oh no. There's two fruits and one. That's vegetable. the one I'm having. Yes. Why would you mix that together? Um, <laughs> so it's, it's a game. Bias. Pears? Is it? Oh, um, is it green? The yes, one of them is. 
<laughs> is it kale? No, it's not kale. Spinach? No, it's not spinach. Fuck. I mean... <laughs> I know, I know this. Is it an avocado? <laughs> yeah, is it an avocado? It is an avocado! That's is not that a vegetable! vegetable. Yes, that is not a vegetable! It's not a vegetable! I didn't know, so it's okay, Ryan. Thanks, man. I got it. Ryan, take this away from me. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, this one smells, this one smells terrible. Oh, <laughs> just wait. Oh, no. This is the As last round. Don't let me in my cup. We're going into the last round. So, Jimmy, yes. this is your third year yes. here at ISU. What is different about this year that makes you feel more comfortable in your position? Hmm. Um... <laughs> They haven't told me not to come back. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I, f I think I feel a little more comfortable and like my feet are underneath me this year. Um, I think I have a lot more responsibility this year than I have in past years, so that's that's exciting. And then I'm directing in the spring, so. Oh, yeah. Guys yeah. and dolls. Yeah. So I'm, exci I'm excited about that, and they, I guess they saw something to give me responsibility for that. So. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> what is happening? So how is um, so you're still continuing with Fed Talks right now? Yes, I am. Uh, Fed Talks is Jimmy's podcast uh, on theater education. It's it's really awesome if you uh, are interested in theater or education or theater education. It is the perfect Jimmy. podcast for you. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I'm going to be on an episode Wes, too. Um, I make sure you mix it up. I have to mix it up. Yes, God, I'm going to mix your it up. Job. There's a oh, this one's. Ryan. So it's fine. They're just different. I've been just nice to you this year. <laughs> Jimmy, what have been some of your um, most interesting it. experiences with guests on your podcast? Oh. Um, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say my Tony winners, and it's not just because I want to like, ooh, I've interviewed Tony winners. <laughs> um, it's because they don't really care anymore. They just gonna they say what they feel, and they don't feel like they have to. Um, censor themselves for their school districts because it's like I wanted to Tony what are you going to do to me <laughs> um, so that's been really cool to, to hear them like really just share from their heart and what they really what they really think about teaching and and kind of the world around theater education so wh what's your future plans for the podcast how, how long do you think it's going to go um, as long as people keep listening um, and I don't know. What are we doing? I can't do it. I can't do it. I can, I can smell the turkey coming off of it already. I can't do it. I'll go first. I'll go first. You're going first? I'm scared. Okay, this definitely has peas in it. I can smell oh, it. Oh, no. Nice. Did you just say Is it mm? just peas? <laughs> what is going said, on? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, okay. Mountain is it, and it's yum, <laughs> yum all. It's so good. Um, can uh, jarred baby food buy it today? Um, peas? Yes. It's not just peas. It's not just peas. Um, I think there are two more in there. You, you think? think? Yes. <laughs> hey, is it? Is so there many. a banana in there? A little bit, yes. <laughs> so so green means bit. banana. Please. Said peas and banana. Uh, sorry, peas, banana. Um, I really can't taste anything else. It's another. It's another. Little, it's another little bit. I keep eating it. I don't know why. It's not good. I'm glad yours is good. It's not. Uh, <laughs> I just keep eating it. I can it smell mine, and it's look, pretty far that, away. This is how I deal with things. If there's food in my hand, I eat it. Okay, that's it. <laughs> um, peas, banana. I give up. I can't. I can't. Squash. Squash is the third. I'm not a squash eater. Apparently you are. Can I put this back down? You got it. You got it. I can do it. Okay, who's next? Jimmy sounds like he's going. Jimmy's going. Oh. I heard him prepping. I'll go, yeah. Oh, that's disgusting. That's really gross. What is that? <laughs> I told Ryan, like, yeah, give him fruits the first two That's rounds. That's not a fruit. <laughs> I, said, I said the third round, just let him have it. That's disgusting. <laughs> I don't know, but it's gross. Ew. Um, 
<laughs> there's one jar that Wes and I both can't have, so it has to be in oh. there. That's the one. Oh, uh, is it just that one? It's just that one. Oh, oh ew. It's the macaroni well, beef. Mix it with so it's, it's, ma- it's macaroni, beef, and vegetables. Oh. 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 Right. That's gross. <laughs> we make babies eat these things? No wonder they cry all the time. That's Maybe disgusting. Cleanse your palate with the applesauce. What? Cleanse your palate with the applesauce. Is it still in front of him? Who has oh. the oh. Is it this one? No! Oh, my God. I'm just this the, one. Stop. Let's take this off. Wait. Who Let's has take this off. Wait, Ben. Ben has to go first. Who has the worst cup out of the three of us right now? Me. Oh, my, I don't even know. There's so, there's so <laughs> many factors. That was disgusting. Okay, wait. Okay, I'm gonna try mine now. I'm good. Sure. I'm really good. Right. Right. Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm, you betrayed us. I'm you drunk. To- <laughs> go, Ben. Okay, I'm going already. <laughs> <laughs> Don't throw up. Don't do it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> ah, what was in that? I wish I could was, see your face right now. It's, it's awful. awful. Ah. Like it's ah! Why did you give me three really bad ones? I gave you two. No, 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 no. There's ah! It's like giving me waves. It's like the third wave is hit. No, yeah, no. no. <laughs> ah! <laughs> It's, there's turkey in it. I know that. Is, there, there, is it the beef then? No. <laughs> like, there's meat in there. There is meat in there. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> what? What? Is it the gravy one? Dude, you're, you're, you're getting close. There's gravy in there. <laughs> I, I don't want to put more in my mouth. I'm just going to Meats, buddy. Uh, what? I don't. Are you done? B. It's not the. Is it the? It, I don't remember what we. Did we only have chicken? Is there pork? No, you almost said it. Chicken? Yes. I said chicken, oh. didn't I? No, you didn't. Oh. 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 All right. So uh, I, I wasn't keeping score. I won. Um, okay, sure. You, you won. <laughs> it was disgusting. I know it was. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this blindfold on while I say this next part so that I can hide my tears. Oh, you want us to keep? But um, I'm gonna keep mine on. But I just want to say to Jimmy um, that if it weren't for him, I don't know if I would have made it this long in college. Um, that like you've been such a great mentor, um, and without you, I don't think I ever would have known what I was gonna do. Um, so thank you for steering me on the track. And forcing me to graduate out of college. Getting you out of here. Oh, wow. There's a lot of cups there. What's going on with the pig? What's going on with the pig in my office? That was disgusting. I told you we're going out with a bang. What are the odds you drink that? This one? This one looks good. This looks like the apple one. Is that the apple apple one? Yeah, it looks like the apple one. Do it, drink it. (laughs) Does that one have glue? to get in a fight with John Tovar. Alright, it's a fair game. Uh, I'm gonna drink some more of this. Um, oh, okay. Ben's got the setup. And in this corner, we have the award-winning fight choreographer, John Tovar! Corner, we have the host of tonight's main event, Wesley Skim. He's wow. mean, he's young, and he's scrappy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, John. Oh. That did not work at all. All right. 
<laughs> I want a clean fight out of both of you. You understand? Huh. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know I won, but I promised you that you'd get to do a thing. Oh. That I so in case you're not aware, uh, Illinois State University School of Theater and Dance was holding a Hatch Project. Woo! What Hatch Project is, is it's a fundraiser. It's kind of like a Kickstarter. And we were holding it for our stage combat curriculum. We wanted to raise money so that we can fix our qu equipment, offer more classes, and bring in new equipment to be able to offer even more classes and create <coughs> one of the most comprehensive stage combat curriculums in the country. And now we have raised all three phases of the Hatch Project. So, <laughs> and so I posted in uh, the Facebook group that if we reached phase two, John would shave my head live on stage. Oh yeah, it's happening. Uh, <laughs> Do you have the razor? It's right here. Okay. I, it's charged. It's ready to go. It's charged. Yeah, I charged it. So then we don't even need to worry about um, it. Here's a bucket <laughs> to get my hair in. And I'm gonna be bald. <laughs> First bald? Okay. John, you can do whatever you want with the hair as we go through the process. Ooh, that's Can I do Hold on, hold on. Yeah. There you go. That's better. All right, um, so while this happens, uh, I wanted to answer a couple questions if anyone in the audience had any for me. Not that I have a lot of wisdom, but uh, I just, uh, since this is my last time on stage and my last show, I just wanted to see if anyone wanted to know anything from me at all. So if you want to take questions. I will. Let me get a picture first. <laughs> I dream a dream of time. <laughs> <laughs> Take some questions. Okay, does anyone have any questions for Wes? We will start over here. Is the first thing I Are you going to miss your hair? Am I going to miss my hair? Yes. <laughs> it was already falling out. Um, so it's like, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> um, Old man Wes. Yes. <laughs> Old man, no. <laughs> Any other questions for me? Questions about college, uh, college career, anything I've done, anything yeah. like that. We got one before I go. Can you stop talking so I can answer my question? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Um, what you... It's, it's me. Hi. Um, what has been the most exciting college experience that you've had? Exciting college experience. Oh yeah. man. Um, <laughs> I've, I've. There's just so many to choose from. I, uh, I, I think Godspell was probably one of my most memorable experiences. I know everyone's tired of hearing me talk about it. Uh, Godspell was really what uh, made me feel at home in the, in the theater department here. And I think that was really just an exciting experience for me because it was new for me as an actor to be able to play that much on stage. And that was just super cool. <laughs> Let's tilt you up a little bit. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we got one more. We got another question, Wes. All right. All right, Wes. Why did you do it? Why did you? Why did you uh, unleash the legions of hell upon the GMP world? Oh my gosh. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a long story to tell. Um, so, uh, Joe, that's who asked the question. Uh, Joe, my friend Danny, my friend James, uh, Jordan, and Justin, and I, we were all in. Uh, acapella group together, and we played D&D, &D, and that was my first experience with D&D, &D. and I kind of really went power hungry. Um, I, <laughs> I went insane because uh, I, I, my character got a weapon that turned him evil, and so I was like, well, I'm going to play the character, and I, I turned evil and decided I was the rightful ruler of hell. 
And <laughs> so it actually caused a civil war between our whole group where uh, we split between each other and there was 3v3 fighting uh, to see who was actually going to rule hell. Um, I ended up dying. <laughs> but in the long run, I think it was just a really fun experience to be able to, like, D&D is just, there's so much imagination there. And I know, like, a lot of people look at it as something nerdy uh, for people to do. But, like, it's, it's just really, you learn a lot of good skills from playing a game like that. Like, improv skills, a lot of uh, communication skills, and just, like, uh, team building, teamwork stuff. And, and I just think it's really cool. It's something that I definitely want to continue playing in the future. See how I turned that on you, Joe? Now I sound like a I'm bald so like close. Joe now. So close. Uh, almost there. Any final questions? Yeah, we got one. What inspired you to start the podcast? To start the podcast? Um, so I talked about this, uh, the first live show I had. Um, I was at a really low point of my life. Uh, just getting the surface was, um, it was... It started off as a really depressing podcast about uh, dark uh, themes like death uh, and uh, just morality and <laughs> stuff like that. And it was just like, it wasn't something that, because I, I had lost three grandparents in the same year um, and they were all really close to each, uh, each other and I hadn't really dealt with death that close to me um, ever before that. And so I just, I just needed a space to just be able to babble and talk. And I, I just thought it'd be cool to record it in a podcast form because I'd been told at Columbia that I had a voice for radio. I also have a face for it. <laughs> I have a voice for radio. And so I was like, okay, I'll start a podcast. And then I decided I didn't want to be depressing anymore. And uh, I turned it into interview style because uh, it was always my dream to kind of like host a late night talk show. Uh, I don't know why, but it's, I just thought it'd be super cool. So, yeah, that's what really inspired me. Oh, yeah. We got, we got another question? I feel a breeze. Uh, Wes, hi, Christian here. Hi, Christian. Uh, <laughs> are you producing or are you helping to like, direct any shows while you're still teaching? And if so, what? Yeah, I'll be uh, assistant directing A Midsummer Night's Dream, uh, which is super exciting because I've actually never worked on a Shakespeare piece before. Um, and I don't like Shakespeare, I'll say it. Um, Shakespeare to me is like, like, it's not that I hate him, okay? I, I respect him and what he did for theater. Uh, and I think, I think that it, okay. <laughs> he's, like, he's like a browning banana. Uh, I wouldn't just pick him up and, and eat him. <laughs> I wouldn't just pick it up and eat it, but I would take that and use it in something else, like uh, in baking, or uh, to, to make something else out of it. I don't know if that makes any sense, it's a metaphor. Uh, but I really think, I think if you modernize Shakespeare, it makes it more accessible to um, the masses. And I think, I think that's a good way to bring uh, Shakespeare into the education setting. Like, I, I just don't think it's fair to have them start with like Romeo and Juliet, because sometimes that's really like hard for kids to understand if they don't have the proper education leading up to it. Here, wait. Anyone want, anyone want hair? Want to hold on to that. <laughs> this is the last time you're ever going to see it, right? It. It's not growing back. Yeah. It Trust me. It uh, 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 oh, wow. It's true. I feel like you, yeah. you, uh, you and Aiden and Tobar all need to get like, a picture. <laughs> now, because because of the way you look now, you're officially a fight director. Oh, look at me. <laughs> I won All the fight. facial hair, we're compensating with the hair on the face. It's exactly. great. You totally got this. All right. Um, what would it take for you to shave? Oh, now I'm. Oh, what would it take? No, that is not happening. Sorry, it's it's all I have now. So um, no. What if I beat you in boxing? No. This feels really weird on my head now. Oh, it will. Ah, uh, uh, I'm gonna get used to that. All right, thank you very much, John. Thank you. Thank you. So it's been a long run. <laughs> um, this is, uh, you know, the start of the end. Uh, I've got the rest of this week and then one week after break and it's off to student teach and off to the rest of my life. And I'll, I'll admit, it's, it's kind of scary. <laughs>
uh, because I, I really didn't think I was going to get to this point. There are so many times in my life that graduating college just didn't seem like something that was going to happen. Um, I mean, this is my sixth year since graduating high school almost, and <laughs> that's why everyone calls me grandpa, because I'm older. <laughs> But I, through the breaks and through all the obstacles, um, I think through everyone that I've met along the way and everyone here at ISU, just thank you so much for helping me through and helping me get here at this point. So. And with that, we're just skimming the surface. Thank you for listening. Uh, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, uh, Facebook, like W Skim Milk on Facebook. I say us because that's just how you advertise things. <laughs> yeah. act, act like it's a group and more people will follow you. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming out tonight. It's great we had a full house. So. With that, we're just skimming the surface. This is Wesley W. Skim Milk Skim, uh, the host of Just Skimming the Surface. I just wanted to give out some thank yous. Um, <laughs> as I'm editing this, I'm feeling very grateful for my time with the School of Theater and Dance at Illinois State University. So thank you so much to Free Stage for allowing me to host not one, but three of these live shows while I was there. Uh, thank you to Ben Went for co-hosting the show with me. Thank you to Ryan Rents for being our stagehand, our guests, Kelsey Fisher-Waits, Jimmy Chrisman, and John Tobar for coming on, talking, helping us out with activities, just having a good time. Thank you to Southbound for singing some music for us. Check them out on Spotify. And thank you to Mousepad. This song you're listening to right now is Midnight. Uh, one of his songs that he's allowing me to use is my intro, outro for Just Giving the Service. So check them out on Spotify, SoundCloud, Facebook. Links will be in the description. And thank you to you, the listeners, and all of you who came out to the live shows to support me. Thank you so much for listening, supporting, and um, I hope you all have a great night.